Oh, hey! Hey, guys! Hey, uh, I got something to tell you about today. You, you, you guys are gonna love this. I stumbled upon something great. Uh, oh, oh, this back here? We'll, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. I just... Oh, man, I don't even know where to start. I just... <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> did you... Did you just ask me <laughs> why? <laughs> You, you, you mother fucker, you clicked on the video and you have the nerve to ask me why? Emergence, metamorphosis, 177013. It goes by many names, but only one reputation. If you're a degenerate internet weeaboo, you probably know two things about Emergence. The first is this single illustration from the very first page. And the second is that Emergence is a very dark story. Emergence is a hentai doujinshi written by Shindo L, which was serialized from 2013 to 2016. During that period, it quickly gained a reputation for being a very dark story, which, in case you aren't a complete degenerate who reads hentai every day, being dark by hentai standards is very hard to pull off. Well, life's not going that great for me. My wife left me, my kids left me, my dog died from a broken heart last fall. So I don't know, yeah, probably just gonna end it all or something. Emergence is the kind of dark that most people are completely unwilling to subject themselves to, even out of morbid curiosity. But it wasn't enough to stop me, because I have very poor mental health. Emergence follows the story of Saki Yoshida, who is just starting high school. This is the only time I will draw attention to her age throughout this entire video because it makes me sad to think about. Saki is kind of a nerdy girl. She likes reading and video games. Her hair is a bit unkempt. She's very quiet and she doesn't have any friends. Her classmates did try to befriend her, but she was always afraid of not fitting in, so she always avoided them. Saki realizes that she hates the isolation associated with being an outcast and decides to try fitting into their world. She decides to start high school as a whole new person. Saki asks her mom to teach her how to do her makeup, and her mom really jumps at the opportunity to help her out. Saki reflects on how her and her mom have never really been that close, but this simple change seems to have closed that gap, if even a little. She's already seeing a greater level of acceptance, and she likes how it feels. Even Saki's sweaty dad tells her that she looks much nicer. I wish I could tell you this wasn't foreshadowing. I really do. So Saki starts high school and things are going great. Some girls in her class invite her to hang out and she finally feels like she's finding some acceptance. Her confidence is soaring, but Emergence isn't known for its good feels. Oh, no, no, no. While out in town, Saki runs into a man who starts flirting with her. And this guy's a real class act. I mean, just look at him. There's absolutely nothing about his appearance that would suggest he's a complete fucking scumbag. We've got to remind ourselves here that Saki is an incredibly innocent and ignorant individual. She's not accustomed to basic social interaction, let alone the intricacies of flirting. She has no way of knowing when someone's being genuine versus when they're just trying to get something from her. She takes everything at face value. So cut her some slack for falling for this guy's weak ass game. I mean, he even pulls the, wow, you must be a model line and she is completely fucking smitten. I'll tell you, I work wonders in bed. The guy asks Saki out on a date and she is all too happy to go along. She doesn't even consider the possibility that he may have ulterior motives. Instead, she's more concerned that he'll realize she's a boring person and lose interest in her. The pair go out to a karaoke parlor where modern day Sanji begins respecting women and... Okay, here's where we need to lay down some ground rules. This video is going on YouTube, and if I want to keep it on YouTube, then I absolutely cannot tell you about anything that actually happens in this doujin. None of it. You have no idea. So here's how this is going to work going forward. Anytime something happens that I'm not allowed to talk about, which will be a lot, I'm instead going to describe it in terms of Magic the Gathering. Because if you watch or read hentai, there's a good chance you also play Magic. But if you don't, worry not. I'll explain everything as I go. The first card we need to establish is our girl Saki. Saki Yoshida is going to be a planeswalker. Magic players aren't going to love this description, but for the sake of simplicity, you can think of a planeswalker as a card representing a player. 
She's not going to act like the other cards we're going to create, and she's going to be much more durable. Saki has a starting life of 30 points. Technically, these are called loyalty counters, but don't worry about that. If this depletes to zero, Saki will move to the graveyard pile. Saki has three abilities that can either increase or decrease her life points, but we'll go over what they actually do later. Our super friendly guy friend here is going to be a simple 2-2 human creature token. These numbers here represent his power and toughness respectively. Basically, how much damage he deals and how much damage he can take. Our generic human creature token offers Saki a funny candy, which she tries to refuse very passively. Token man either doesn't take the hint or simply doesn't care. I have my theory on which, but I'll let you decide. He then initiates an attack. We are going to use the term attack as a stand in for something less than consensual. He drops Saki's guard further by whispering sweet nothings and telling her that he loves her after knowing her for like three hours. And again, because Saki is very innocent, she believes him completely. That funny candy I mentioned earlier is going to be an instant spell card that makes his attack unblockable. He attacks Saki for two damage, bringing her life down to 28 points. Saki passes out from all the overstimulation and the man finally introduces himself. He was played face down as a 1-1 creature token, but we're now going to flip him face up for his morph cost and introduce him for real. Hayato is a 1-1 changeling creature with the ability Soul Bond, the effect of which we'll go over later. The changeling part is just my cheeky way of representing how this dickhead will say or do whatever he has to to manipulate Saki. Saki can't see anything wrong with what he did, believing it was all done out of feelings for her. So she's going to start dating Hayato. Yay. So a little bump in the road, but Saki doesn't see it that way. Her life is still trending in the right direction from her own perspective. She's still struggling to fit in at school a little bit though. Saki's family isn't all that well off, but all the girls in her class are into buying and showing off all these designer accessories that Saki can't afford. Women be shopping, am I right? You know, somehow I feel this video would be less likely to get me canceled if I hadn't written that joke into it. And I think that says a lot about society, society. Saki is concerned that if she can't afford nice things, she won't be able to fit in. Luckily, one of her friends has a great job opportunity that she could hop on to gain some extra Robux. The job is simple. Go on a date with some rich old dude and get paid just for spending time with them. Saki's warned that they may try to make a move on her, but all she has to do is threaten to call the police to shut them down quick. This sounds great for Saki, because she's really good at saying no. Saki ends up on a date with a very nice old gentleman. We'll introduce him as a 1-1 human creature. Almost immediately, he begins making a move on Saki. Now, Saki does tell him to knock that shit off, but unfortunately, our friend has Bushido, which means that when his attack is faced with opposition, it only grows more aggressive. He gains plus two, plus zero when blocked, meaning he's now attacking Saki for three damage, bringing her life down to 25 points. Not all bad, though. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is like really bad, but at least he leaves her with a fast stack of cash for the trouble. Saki gains 10 Robux. Saki comes home very late, and her mom is initially pretty upset, but she quickly realizes that something's wrong. She doesn't ask Saki what happened, though. She just tells Saki that she's there for her, and she always will be. And honestly, this is some 10 out of 10 parenting. She's giving Saki her space and privacy, while still extending her support no matter the circumstances. Mom is a 0-5 human creature with Defender. Defender means that she can only block attack. She's incapable of attacking if she had the power to do so. Saki decides not to tell her mom what happened because she's afraid of what her mom will think. And she's afraid of losing her mom's acceptance. Thanks to the Robux she got from that friendly old man, Saki is able to afford some designer items and gain some additional praise from her friends. By the way, I'm gonna skip over some things that happen in our fake game for the sake of pacing, so if you see some numbers change, don't worry about it. I'm keeping track. Saki feels good being able to fit in, but ultimately regrets how she got the Robux. She's about to regret it a lot more, though, because this is Emergence, and she's not allowed to be happy, so neither are we. One of the boys in Saki's class happened to see her with the old man, and he got a photo of the two. Now, he and the other boys want Saki to do some 
favors for them in exchange for keeping her secret. Each of these boys is a 1-1 human creature token, and there are three of them. Saki's going to take just one damage for now, but they're going to be an ongoing adversary. Hey guys, remember Saki's sweaty dad? For anyone who's never played Magic, the way it works goes like this. During your attack phase, you're always attacking the player directly. You can't attack any of their creatures. The player you're attacking may choose to block that attack with their creatures or simply take the damage. Saki has her mom on her side of the battlefield and can choose to have her block attacks. In story terms, Saki's mom can only protect Saki if Saki asks for her help. Here, Saki is being attacked by her father and she tries to call to her mom for help. But there's a problem. Dad is a 1-1 human creature with fear. Fear makes it so that his attack is unblockable, except by artifact creatures and black creature cards. Saki's mom is neither, so she's forced to take the attack. And no, this isn't a one-time thing. Between her dad and the boys in her class, Saki just can't catch a break. And to make matters worse, yes you heard me, it gets worse. Saki's friends are jealous of the increased attention that she's getting from the boys. Saki is understandably upset. She just wanted to fit in, but all her efforts got her was rejection. She feels so overwhelmed and finally decides to turn to the one person on her side. Saki's mom found out what was going on between Saki and her father. And she blames Saki. Because she's a fucking psychopath sucking down more copium than a Sonic fan who thinks Frontiers will be a good game. Saki's mom is actually a double-faced card, known colloquially as a two-faced bitch. After transforming, Saki's mom becomes a 1-5 human creature with the effect once transformed, Saki's mom comes under your opponent's control. She's lost her defender ability and she's no longer on Saki's side. Even though she promised Saki, she always would be. Saki's mom attacks her for one damage. Not a normal attack though, she's just beating her daughter. Better? Worse? Who fucking cares? Everything is horrible and you're gonna die someday. Think about that for a second. You're going to die someday. You have a finite amount of time to be alive. There is no afterlife. There is no God. And you are wasting minutes of your precious life watching a video essay about fucking hentai. Ah! Don't you dare click off! We're in this together now, you and I. You can't walk away now. This will always be a part of you. Saki decides to run away from home, from her parents, her classmates, and her past. But where's Saki going? In her time of need, she turns to everybody's favorite scumbag, Hayato. Bill Cosby wannabe takes Saki to an underground bar where her entire life takes a turn for the worst. Here, we're introduced to Obata, a drug dealer and pimp that Hayato is indebted to. Remember how I said drug dealer and pimp two seconds ago? Being the kind-hearted girl that she is, Saki wants to help Hayato out with his debt, and with that being said, we can start to utilize her plus abilities. Both of Saki's plus abilities achieve the same goal but to different degrees. Her plus one is called work and it allows her to convert an incoming attack into Robux. She will negate the damage entirely while gaining just one Robux and adding one point to her life total. Her plus three is called work hard and does the same thing but for a greater reward. She will gain five Robux and three life while taking no damage. But that's not all. Now that Saki is supporting Hayato, Hayato's soul bond ability activates. By being soul bonded to Hayato, Saki has to pay two Robux per turn in order to pay off his debt. Lastly, Saki gains the Addiction Enchantment. Enchantments attach to creatures in order to either buff or debuff them. Technically, they can't attach to Planeswalkers, but shut up! The Addiction Enchantment allows Saki to, once per turn, gain one life point, or take the edge off, if you will. 
However, in doing so, Saki will need to pay one Robux and she will also accrue one poison counter. This may come as a shock to some of you, given its rather innocent name, but you don't want to accumulate too many poison counters. Okay, now that we have all these new moving parts, let's put them to work. During her turn, Saki pays two Robux to Hayato. She then activates her addiction and gains one life, one poison counter, and loses one Robux. Saki ends her turn. Bar Patron is a 1-1 human creature token that is attacking Saki. By activating her plus three ability, Work Hard, Saki gains three life, five Robux, and negates the damage entirely. Did that all make sense? If not, consult your physician because it's pretty fucking simple. This is Saki's life now. A life that she's excited about because she's blind to how bad this all is. She thinks she's helping Hayato, not being taken advantage of. She thinks her new addiction is just a really good feeling. Despite everything, Saki is still incredibly innocent. Hi there, my name is Mac. You may remember me from the video you're currently watching or the dumpster behind your local Taco Bell. But did you know that on top of being very attractive, I also do all the scripting, filming, set and prop design, editing, motion graphics, and marketing for each of my videos by myself while also working a regular full-time job? This leads to a very time-consuming and often expensive production cycle. I am firmly in the red in terms of net profits. Now I don't do this for the money and I never will. But with that being said, I am poor. And this means that sometimes I'm not able to do things for the channel that I want to do. So with that being said, I'd like to announce that I am officially e-begging by opening an OnlyFans Patreon! For just five bucks a month, you get access to new videos one week earlier than on YouTube, weekly progress updates, behind the scenes live streams, monthly patron only live streams, your name slapped onto the video as thanks for the cold hard cash, and more! I'd like to make it clear that none of my content will ever be behind a paywall. This is just for you to support the channel more directly if you want to and get some extra goodies as thanks. If you can't afford the Patreon but still want to throw some extra support my way, consider visiting me at twitch.tv slash captainmac underscore. I stream three days a week and I love getting a chance to talk to you guys there. If you do join the Patreon, then the behind the scenes live stream for this video will come out two weeks after its release, so you have some time to decide. All right, enough e-begging. Join the Patreon if you're an Alpha Chad legend and back to the video. We catch back up with Saki after an indeterminate amount of time. She now has tattoos and piercings in places that I cannot actually show you. Her skin is dark from tanning and her hair is bleached from bleaching. Saki is settled into her new life and is working very hard to support herself and Hayato. Mostly Hayato, who doesn't seem to do much of anything. But a life like this is not without its risks. And with that being said, we can reveal Saki's minus ability. At a cost of minus 10 life, Saki generates a 0-1 fetus creature. Said fetus can be exiled for a cost of 10 Robux or it will transform after nine turns. However, if it's destroyed before being exiled or transformed, the owner will take five damage. Hayato decides that it's for the best if said fetus goes the way of Roe v. Wade. Saki's feelings on this turn of events are mixed. On one hand, there's a desire to please Hayato, a desire that directs most of her decisions at this point. But on the other hand, she's clearly not happy taking this drastic of an action without being given a proper choice in the matter. She just did what Hayato wanted. She didn't have a chance to consider her options. You would think an event like this would have Saki reconsidering her life choices, but she doesn't. Saki's number one priority is to keep Hayato happy because she wants Hayato to love her, so she'll continue to do whatever he wants. Saki lost a lot of Robux to the fetus situation, but coming by more is getting difficult. Saki tries her hardest to pull in clients, but even her old clients are losing interest in her. Worse yet, Obata introduces her to something new. Saki's addiction transforms into a stronger form. Now, for every time it's activated, Saki gains two life and has to pay two Robux, but she still only generates one poison counter. But this creates an issue. Saki still has to pay Hayato two Robux per turn, and her strength and addiction costs more, but she's pulling in less Robux than ever. 
In fact, her addiction is so strong that it sometimes knocks her out completely, leaving her to being robbed by her clients. Saki now has no Robux, even though it's getting more expensive to get by, just like real life. Saki turns to Obata and asks him for Robux. Obata refuses to just hand over Robux, but he agrees to help her out if she'll do some work for him. Obata gives Saki a choice. She can either take the Robux or she can activate her addiction enchantment for free. Saki tells herself over and over to take the Robux, but her addiction is stronger than her willpower can handle. The problem with Saki is that she's overly trusting and far too kind-hearted for the world she's been thrust into. Even after all this time, she still has zero doubt that Hayato, of all people, has her best interests at heart. But she's in for a rude awakening. After returning home without any Robux, Hayato attacks her, the old-fashioned way. He then decides that she's more trouble than she's worth and kicks her out. Saki tries desperately to get him to reconsider, but she can't get through to him. Finally, she sits down outside his apartment to consider her next move. While she waits, another girl comes over and it dawns on Saki that Hayato isn't going to take her back. It's also clear to her that Hayato wasn't being faithful to her, as if that's a surprise to anybody. Besides Saki, I mean. With nowhere left to go, Saki has to fend for herself, but she's never had to do such a thing. And she's not exactly built for the cruelty of the real world. Saki decides to stop and satisfy her addiction. In a park! At night! Because nothing could possibly go wrong like that. Saki is attacked by two homeless men and takes two damage. But hey, at least they gave her a place to sleep in their tent village. Good dudes, chill bros. In the morning, Saki tries to eat the food they give her, but she can't keep it down. She's not sick, though. Saki remembers this feeling. This time, though, things are different. Saki has no one to fall back on to help her out, and no one to dictate what she does. Saki decides that this time, she's going to keep it. She resolves to clean up her act, and give her future child the life it deserves, free of the pain she's had to suffer. But some things are easier said than done. Some months later, a very pregnant Saki is doing all she can to get by. She stays with homeless men for shelter, she somehow lost a tooth, and despite her resolve, she's been unable to rid herself of the addiction enchantment. Anytime she feels pain from the pregnancy, Saki activates her addiction in order to manage the pain. I think it's an understatement to say that that's an extraordinarily poor way to handle the issue, and Saki knows that. But she never learned to cope without before, much less now that she has so much more pain to deal with. It's a difficult situation to be stuck in to say the least, and would take the strongest of willpowers to overcome. Saki, unfortunately, just doesn't have that willpower. It's not all bad, though. For what it's worth, Saki does use as little as she feels she can to get by, and saves whatever Robux she makes. Which is a lot! Damn, look at that sack of Robux, baby! About to make mom's credit card quake! No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Saki is still the unreasonably kind-hearted girl that she's always been, just doing whatever she can to support the child that she'll soon have. There's something amazing about Saki. She's seen more hardship, pain, and negativity than many of us ever will. Yet through it all, she remains optimistic. Despite being betrayed by everyone in her entire life, she still wants to believe in others and see the best in the world. But the world just doesn't work that way. Some people it feels wrong to refer to these monsters as people. I'm going to refer to them as scum. Some scum of the earth notice Saki's Robux bag. They question Saki as to where she got the Robux, believing she had to have stolen it. Saki tries to run away, but they don't let her. You really have to question what kind of monsters would feel the need to belittle and attack a pregnant homeless woman and... Wait a minute, are they? It is! They're Saki's fucking classmates! 
These stupid bitches are partially responsible for the state Saki's life is in now. And now they're here to make it worse? All five scum attack Saki at once. The fetus blocks one of the attackers. However, since it's destroyed in the process, Saki takes five damage. Including the four unblocked attackers, Saki's life is brought down to just one point. The scum steal all of Saki's Robux and leave her there. Naked and badly injured, Saki eventually gets up and starts walking. A man passing by sees her, but completely ignores her. Saki has been forsaken by the world that brought her to this point. Saki makes her way to a public restroom. There, while looking at herself in the mirror, she puts on her old glasses and twists her hair into braids. What she sees reflected in that mirror is who she once was, and she can't stand that sight. Saki's life is dangerously low, and she can't stand the pain. In order to get through it, Saki activates her addiction three turns in a row. This brings her life back up to seven points, but it also brings her total poison counters up to ten. According to the rules of Magic the Gathering, a player that accumulates ten poison counters loses the game. Saki is brought back to attention by the sound of her daughter's voice. They sit in a park together and Saki tells her daughter about a time before she was born. A time when Saki had to deal with a lot of hardship. But Saki tells her daughter that everything is better now. That everything changed when she was born. That Saki's life finally took a turn for the better. Well, it's a nice thought, at least. I've mentioned it a couple times already, but if there's something that really strikes me about this story, it's the incredible kindness of Saki. Saki's parents, Hayato, Obata, the homeless men, her old classmates, no matter what any of them did to her, Saki was never as upset by their actions as she was by her own inability to satisfy whatever they wanted from her. All Saki ever wanted from everyone in her life was acceptance. Saki would go to the ends of the earth to make the people in her life happy. But no matter how far she went, they always wanted more. Saki fought for acceptance in a world that constantly rejected her. Yet through it all, she never gave up hope. But there was always one big flaw with this aspect of Saki's personality. Despite how badly Saki wanted that acceptance, she failed to accept herself. At the beginning of the story, Saki mentioned a fear of being mocked for being different, but that never actually happened. Saki's classmates tried to invite her into their lives, but Saki pushed them away. Saki couldn't accept herself, so she assumed no one else would either. Until eventually, the solitude became too much, and she molded herself into what she thought they wanted her to be. At the end of her story, Saki smashed the mirror because what she saw reflected in it was the first person that rejected her. How differently could this story have gone if Saki had allowed herself to be vulnerable and shown them who she truly was? Well, unfortunately, that's not the story we read today. In conclusion, I have been traumatized. If you take anything away from this cursed video, I want you to think about Saki the next time you see someone in need. The next time you see a homeless person on the street, don't assume they're some lazy bum who doesn't want to get a job. 
they've probably been through a lot and they could probably use a break. Don't be the guy who saw Saki and turned away. Be the one who would go out of your way to help her and help her get back on track. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more trauma.